The Ford Mustang is one of the most iconic American cars ever made, with millions upon millions of cars being produced since the mid-1960s until today. They are one of the most celebrated and modified cars in the entire world. With big screen appearances in the likes of the movies Bullet and Gone in 60 Seconds, virtually everybody can identify the Mustangs used in these movies if they were spotted out in the wild. But there is one extremely important Ford Mustang that almost nobody has ever heard of. Yet, it had arguably a bigger impact on the lives of young American men than all the other cars. And that Mustang was the one and only 1970 Boss 429 Lawman. A 1,000 horsepower monster of a car that was toured all around Vietnam during the height of the Vietnam War. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most iconic vehicles of all time. But with that out of the way, let's dive into the history and specs of the craziest Mustang ever made. Now, to truly understand the Lawman Boss 429 and the other Lawman Mustangs, yes, there are in fact more of them, then we need to take a look at the Lawman himself. Now, the Lawman is not some Marvel superhero. See, the Lawman was actually a guy named Al Ekstrand. See, Al was a big-time drag racer back in the 1960s who predominantly raced Mopars, which was because he also just happened to be a lawyer for Chrysler at the time. So you can see why he wasn't running a GM or Ford car at the Strip yet. Al was a racing fanatic who truly believed in the future of drag racing. So much so that in 1966, he worked with Chrysler to develop a program to bring drag racing overseas as a competitive series. They called it the American Commando Drag Team, which is a pretty sweet name if we're being honest. This program continued throughout the 1960s, introducing drag racing to places like England, Sweden, and other European countries. Note that the absolutely crazy car street racing scene in Sweden today can likely be traced back directly to getting some of its roots from this drag racing program that Al spearheaded. Then, in 1970, the Lawman Mustang program started. See, around this time, there was an average of 50,000 plus road fatalities each year in America. Now, obviously, the cars in general were not as safe in the 60s and 70s as they are today. But also, this period was the heyday for street racing. Ford wanted to use the grassroots marketing knowledge that Al had to promote automotive safety to troops overseas, so they would be safe when they came home behind the wheel. They just happened to promote safety with some of the fastest cars the Ford built at the time because they knew the boys coming home from war would want to have something boring to drive. In total, Ford commissioned six lawman cars to be built. Five of them were 428 Cobra jet-powered Mustangs that were conservatively rated at 335 horsepower. Now, the Cobra jet cars were fast in their own right and were pretty mean street machines in the 70s. But the sixth lawman car was a Boss 429 Mustang, the Holy Grail car for collectors. The Hemi-headed all-aluminum Boss 429s are some of the most sought-after Ford engines ever made. In factory trim, these Boss 429s were rumored to make 375 horsepower, but again, that was very, very, very conservatively rated. But all the lawman cars, and specifically the 429 car, were far from stock. All the Cobra Jet lawman cars were set up as street strip brawlers like an avid racer would have back in the day. The Boss 429 lawman, though, well, they threw the kitchen sink at that one. This Boss 429 was full manic race car. With a big old root-style supercharger on it and lots of help under the hood, this Boss pushed out close to 1,000 horsepower in 1970. There was so much power that they had to throw out the four-speed manual and swap into an automatic transmission. Which is another fun fact, as that makes this the only automatic Boss 429 ever made. Now, it is rumored that this specific Lawman Boss 429 cost around $20,000 to build in 1970 money, which is a ton of cash. While the Lawman cars were shipped over to the Pacific, an estimated 40,000 troops were able to actually see the cars and the safety demonstrations that they were used in across Vietnam, Japan, and other bases in the Pacific. Tragically, though, in transport from one base to another, an incident occurred when the Boss 429 was being loaded up at a dock where another shipping container was dropped on the Boss 429. This effectively crushed and destroyed the car. This car was the staple vehicle of the Lawman program, and they could not be without it. So Al, Ford, and the United States Air Force rushed to get a second Boss 429 Lawman car built and flown overseas ASAP. The Boss 429 Lawman replacement has the special VIN number XXX429. The Lawman program continued throughout 1970 in the Pacific touring the cars from base to base. 
Unfortunately, when it came time to end the program, it was deemed too costly to bring these Mustangs back to the States, as Ford would not be able to sell these as new cars. As a result, most of the Lawman Cobra Jet cars were destroyed. However, due to the highly custom and expensive nature of the Boss 429 Lawman Halo car, this car did end up returning stateside. It was actually sold by Ford in 1971 to a local racer who raced the car in the greater Detroit area in the 1970s without the supercharger and without the Lawman moniker. The car under this private ownership stint was referred to as the Blue Devil. After this, the car bounced around a few other owners, eventually before being back in the hands of the lawman himself, Al Ekstrand. Then, after Al owned the car, the car was finally purchased by its current owner, Bill Goldberg, the WWE wrestling legend, in 2003. And since Bill took ownership of the vehicle, the lawman car has been since faithfully restored back to its full 1,000 horsepower, supercharged glory of craziness. And that is the short but fascinating history of the Lawman Boss 429 and its other Cobra Jet counterparts. If you enjoyed this video, then we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel. And smash that notification bell for more documentary-style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.